Welcome to Stock Odds, Odds and End, final week of 2023 edition. Good evening, Rob. Hey, good evening. We got to it on a Saturday again. I appreciate you disrupting your, you know, special time with your family and uh, doing this. So thank you so much. This is important for everybody. So. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Well, I, I, I do hear once in a while that it is a very helpful. We do uh, drop some ideas and and provide some information so it's always nice to hear some feedback so thank you everyone for that and thank you guys for sticking with us for throughout this year and and listening in and asking questions and different things that sometimes we get to address and um, we wish you a very uh, merry christmas happy holidays and uh, we'll talk to you then before new year's so we can wish you a good new year's at that time but um, we do have a shortened week coming up here. So uh, there's a lot packed into this week. So let's get to it and uh, see what we got here. OK, so uh, the SPY kind of traded uh, sideways and choppy. Now, if you look at uh, all of the market ETFs at this point, they all look overbought on an RSI level. Um, so I think people have been kind of thinking that uh, things are a little bit elevated. And we've had some interesting moves this week. All of a sudden, you know, around 2 p.m. or middle of the day, whatever, um, we have this sell-off. And uh, it didn't recover the one day. It did close on its lows. But then um, uh, the other day, it did it did recover. So... Um, it seems and and there wasn't any specific news now it could be just related to somebody saying okay we we want to take some profits and they've, they've got a lot of positions and they're closing things out and you know maybe it's uh all of the things that start to move the uh, indices but uh there wasn't like i said not any specific news but it was just mind kept us mindful that uh we have had a pretty good run this year and you know things are starting to heat up in uh, the Red Sea with with shipping and um, you know we've had sort of this great news from the Fed that's kind of already been partly baked in now and um, you know we're coming to the year end and stuff like that so it's not like we have a lot of tax loss selling but we might have profit taking at the same time as we look at how performances have been this year there may be some window dressing towards the uh, end of the end of the month here so uh, institutions may want to show that they have some of the greatest ideas on their books and so window dressing is still a, a possibility still does occur we've seen it uh, a few months here and there um, but let's keep uh, rolling along here uh, you can see the queues again uh, a little bit less movement than the spies kind of holding in a little bit better Diamonds, you know, we had a fantastic run from uh, no, basically first trading day of November all the way up through this and nice and smooth, good signal to noise ratio. Um, but it suffered that same uh, downdraft that one day there. IWM uh, is finally, you know, kicked in. So the best six months of the year are November 1st until April 30th. And hasn't always uh, been shiny like that for the Russell, uh, but this time around it kicked in and probably because we had a nice oversold condition in October and the small caps had been lagging a lot. And then the thing is that we were starting to see more narrative about maybe one and done for interest rate, you know, like maybe a December hike and then it was finished or a lot of narrative about no more no more hikes at all. Then the narrative started to come in about interest rate cuts in May. Then it kind of went to April, maybe March even. So, um, and then the Fed, of course, came through and confirmed that. So icing on the cake, right? But uh, that's why the small caps have had a pretty good uh, season these last two months. Now, with, with more volatility than the other markets, just because of the growth element, right? The growth path prospects and the fact that other stuff has already run and who wants to go in and buy something that's already up 200% on the year. No, not mentioning any names, but uh, you probably know what I mean. Uh, and versus uh, go in and pick up stuff that's uh, been lagging. 
So that's uh, where we are with the Russell. Here's the sector performance. Um, healthcare came in at the top on Friday because of the merger boosted the healthcare sector. Uh, cons uh, consumer defensive uh, was was doing pretty good for Friday with basic materials as well. Consumer defensive really liked the economic reports that came out and basic materials benefited from the um, dollar. And consumer, well, the dollar going down and, and consumer cyclical had the Nike earnings problem and that knocked that down. So for the week, uh, communication services uh, was on top, mostly fueled by Google and Meta to some degree, I guess. Um, but basic materials came in and did really well because of the decline in the dollar almost all week. Energy benefited a little bit from the dollar, but also this uh, shipping disruption in the Middle East area. Um, we have utilities, even though interest rates you know, have been favorable, uh, utilities just don't have that, uh, you know, appeal for the growth prospects and, uh, you know, the incredible markets that we should see in 2024. And I, I, I chuckle. I've just said that, that, that everybody's expecting <laughs> based on the way they've been acting. So don't don't take it literally. We don't know what's going to happen. Right. Uh, so yeah. anyway, moving on um, market uh, and sector ETFs. Uh, at the top of the game was XLC uh, and IWM, almost neck and neck there. And then we have uh, on the bottom of the pile, utilities, followed by real estate. And again, both of those have been benefited more by, you know, the bonds rising and, and uh, yields declining. Um, so this is kind of pulling back, I guess, from the amazing run that they had the week of the Fed and all that stuff, okay? Now, I want to point out the relative volumes over here. We had a very a light volume week, um, a lot of people traveling. You know, we were, we were post-expiration, uh, so we're on the other side of it. So a lot of the, the work got done the week before. The volumes did rise because of the Fed announcement and expiration and stuff. And then on the other side of this, we have... Um, uh, you know, travel, uh, people just doing other things, you know, interest falling off a little bit, not sure whether they want to really get too committed until the new year, see how things behave. Um, so, I mean, it's very, very light volume. I mean, look at uh, even yeah. with basic materials move that we had for the week, I mean, you know, 0. 0.44 of normal volume, right, Dave? Yeah, less I mean, than half. It's, that's pretty dramatic. I know, but I mean, there's uh, IWM was the one that had close to one, uh -huh. and uh, now you would even think that with its nice performance for the week, it might even had better than that. But no, that's that's what we have. Um, so then, going to the map of the market for Friday, we had the earnings situation from Nike that knocked that down. But what about synopsis here? Uh, do you know anything about synopsis, Dave? Yeah, there's that merger talks are requiring ANS, ANSS possibly. So there's merger talks and speculation on that. So huge drop in uh, synopsis and big move up in ANSS, 18% oh. up. I'm glad that you are so informed. You keep your finger <laughs> on the pulse of the markets here because look what I have here on this slide. I have wow. a speculated acquisition. Speculated. Speculated. So, I mean, it's not announced. You can go to their the company's websites and there's no news to investors or anything like that. But, I mean, this, this just really shows you the risk, not even of a deal coming through, but just even mm -hmm. for talks. So, at this point, you would have to say it's a rumor because Synopsys actually denied or didn't comment or whatever. So, um but look at look at the drop and and normally when when you have a merger that maybe is dilutive or has you know they're paying a lot of premium something like that you do see the acquire drop and you see the target stock of course rise uh, but this is a big jump i would <laughs> i would hate to be short that thing mm -hmm. overnight come in and see that 
uh, or uh, be long this and see that drop. Those those aren't fun. It's a little um, mix so, down there. Yeah, but so, so let's say say you were in let's say you were in something like this. Well, um, you know the deal wouldn't take place until 2024, even if it is going to happen. And at this point, there's no guarantees. Um, so if you were stuck, something I would probably, you know, work the position, trade it, you know, hold it, uh, maybe find something else to, you know, pair it off with in the meantime. But um, if you were short this ANS S, I don't know that somebody's going to come along and pay more premium for it. Maybe, but uh, it's. Uh, I mean, it is it is already up in the it was up in the aftermarket as well. So it, it's it's possible, but uh, you know, sometimes sometimes these things fall apart too. So uh, it's it's not over till to what do they say <laughs> till the fat lady sings. So um, you know, anyway, it's most likely a stock and cash deal. Uh, I heard that synopsis if they are going to be the acquirer here. Um, they might need more cash. They might not have enough to do it on a pure cash basis. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, just wanted to point out that's what can happen just from speculation, even without uh, an official deal being announced. But uh, a lot of times, if um, you know, if you come in and and there's uh, something that happens. On a Friday, um, we always used to say, and I'm not, I'm not advertising this as a you know recommendation or something, but we used to say, buy rumor, right on Fridays, because especially if there's mergers, because often the deals get done on the golf course over the weekend, and then you come in Monday and the deals announced. So if there is a rumor on a Friday, historically it was always like buy rumor, right? Um, it fits into that whole thing about buy rumor, sell news, right? Yep. But anyway, that's that's what happens. Um, so we are expecting an elevated merger climate for 2024. So you know, overnight positions do become riskier, and also the kind of kind of industries the, the, these guys are related to software and. Uh, some semiconductors and stuff like that, and AI and EDS and stuff like that. So those those sectors are pretty hot. I would expect that this whole area is fairly risky anyway, and especially if you're dealing with things that aren't like, you know, hundred or two hundred billion dollar market cap. You know, it's probably safer to be short that than it is to be, uh, you know, short something that's a mid cap or, you know, small cap. So. In that in this space, anyway. Map of the market for the week. There we see our, but there's a few others that had uh, some earnings and other news. Um, but you can see Google and Meta, you know, doing really well for the week. Amazon held up okay. Tesla hasn't done anything for this week. Um, mm -hmm. It did have some news the previous week that was kind of like, you know, maybe they would uh, put a cap. You know, kind of a cap on its ability to rally, and so I I, I found that to be true this week anyway. Um, but you know, kind of speckled through the through the sectors, energy again having a, a better week, um, basic materials having a better week, and software applications again a lot, lot of a uh, lot of area where there can be mergers in that area there so um financials okay except for wells fargo not doing too well oracle came back so oracle had the week before had the problem with earnings and then uh, did spring back a little bit so remember the two-day settlement usually that's the riskier time to play but once the settlement happens often it can be a little bit better um, moving on here's what bitcoin's doing Hanging in there between uh, 40 and 45,000, just trading in a range now. US dollar chart, we saw a bit of a decline uh, this week, and that did boost um, sectors like basic materials and, and energy to some degree. 10 year note, it's uh, continuing to uh, hold up after the Fed boost here and uh, trading 
trading okay. I'm not, you know, not pulling back too much, even on any of those days. So slope is still up. Crude oil, there's your week in play. Still below this uh, 200 MA, right? Now I put up the VXX. This is an ETN. It follows, it tracks, it's tracking stock for the VIX. So we had a, a, a bit of a pop up here uh, this week. And could be could be related to uh, the Colorado block for Trump, um, you know, in terms of why we had that sell off or you know, why the VIX suddenly jumped up a bit. But look at how it rolls over right after. I mean, this this is a very small uh, jump, but it, it constantly happens in its history is pops up and then the news gets, you know, adjusted and starts sliding back down. So I just wanted to point that out. So this particular ETN moves down towards 10 usually, then does a reverse split, goes to back to 40 or 45, then moves down again, reverse split, and it just keeps repeating that all the time because it suffers from contango. So it's uh, because of the options and short-term uh, futures that they use, it um, just decays and then reverse split once it gets down towards 10. Gold, hanging in there okay. And then we have seasonality. What do you see on this, Dave? Yeah, so for the five day, actually the entire month is pretty weak except for the last five days. So whenever they say December Santa Claus rally, it usually starts on the 22nd. And you can see that here the last five days are pretty strong. And then the last three and the last one are just kind of down slightly. So that means the first two of the last five days have the most bang for the buck. And then within that, it, it's a lot of, um, uh, risk, I like the on the sh on the short sides, the really risky stuff like RKK, um, some of the individuals like Roku. So if, right. if you think of Kathy Wood stocks, that's right. what's on the short side, and then on the longer side, it's gold, um, real estate, kind of things that were down last week. So so gold, real estate, energy, uh, basic materials, things like that. So and, and and if you look at the the number of stocks that are up versus down, it's really kind of a bullish five days, 86% of the uh, positive values and 14% negative. So there is a lot of bullish sentiment for the last five days, but more concentrated in the first two. Right. Now, just remember that um, for Tuesday, uh, Canadian markets are closed. Most or all European markets are closed. So any institutional activity is from those uh, jurisdictions are, you know, not on the table. Um, so I expect really light volume. So uh, it's not that markets can't move around. It's just that it does impact how you trade, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, just keep that in mind. And so really, you know, we're not only dealing with a shortened week, we're dealing with uh, where one of the days especially is uh, got very light volume and, and doesn't have these other markets um, involved. And then, you know, we don't know if people cut out early on Friday as well, you know, ahead of the weekend. So it could really impact this week. And, and we saw the relative volume for, for last week already, right? So yeah. uh, that could be the same story again and even worse. So just keep that in mind. Here's the stocks. Anything uh, jump out at you? Yeah, and that just verifies that the RK kind of stocks, Moderna, Etsy, Roku, Baba, right. some, some solar stocks too, First Solar, SCDG. So that's that's the kind of stuff that is – typically short, um, weaker in this kind of uh, period. And then you see gold again, uh, strong on the other side, basic materials, Newmont. So, yeah. And it's then, interesting here, we have a new core and uh, steel dynamics. So they benefit a little bit with this uh, merger potential of X, um, Japan, Japan, Nippon buying X. Um, I would, I don't know if that uh, deals uh, something that could actually get approved. I mean, uh, it's they, there was a quite a bit of premium there. If I remember correctly, it was what forty-seven to fifty-three percent or something. Fifty-three, if I remember correctly. Hmm. Um, but um, 
you know, premium. So, you know, this is interesting because if that starts to fade, that it could, you know, affect these guys. And they're already on the short side here. Um, so, yeah, lots of more other discretionary, uh, some industrials. It's, uh, it's a good mix, though. It's a really good mix. So just a reminder, um, you know, we're looking for stuff that's that 62.5 or higher with the odds of this type of performance for our shorts. And same thing here. Um, you know, I don't I don't necessarily jump at a, like 100 and go, wow, that, that, that has to happen. You know, uh, it could have been an event that really impacted this. Or in phase, for example, 100% chance of going down 5.94%. Uh, for the five days. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, if you can create some if then statements around it, you know, it might be ideal. It might be weak anyway, but I don't necessarily think that like I see 100 and it's like guaranteed, <laughs> you know, it's like it, it's still all probabilities, right? So yeah. just to keep checks and balances. Okay. And now then we have the last trading day of December. Of course, we mentioned it might be light volume, uh, but here, is there any overlap or is there yeah. differences? Yeah, the RKK is overlapping, and um, which in addition to that, you have some of the chip stocks, the SOX, SOXX, and SMH. So if you look at the bottom here, it's 64% downside versus 36% upside. So it's a de-risking, high beta, risky stuff. Even the Qs are weaker typically. On the long side, you've got strength in gold, real estate, oil. So that's the kind of play. It's kind of a flip from the overall right. five-day window. So that, here, here's that the last thing. Yeah. Yeah, here's the tension then. So it, it window dressing, you know, um, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be on the last day, but it could. It could be it could be an up day or it could be a, a significant profit taking day. So um, I would tend to lean on the seasonality more than like a speculation that we might have a, an up up finish to the year, like on the last day. Uh, I would lead more to the seasonality in, in my experience. But um Anyway, there is we, we can't we can't say there's no tensions because we have, you know, money managers that may actually buy on the last day um, to show that they have it uh, because it's been a, a, a year, an incredible year where, you know, it, it rallied in spite of a lot of issues and a lot of problems and probably caught a lot of people uh, by surprise, you know, and uh, maybe they're not in the positions they need to be. So, yeah. Uh, anything that's purchased, of course, on the last day will clear in the new year, though. So if they need it to clear already, then it would it would be a midweek, right? Yeah. The window dressing would happen midweek if they needed to clear. You need two days um, for settlement. Okay. All right. Last trading day for stocks. Yeah, so uh, we have... Uh, Again, strength in oil, gold, real estate, even financials, and again, weakness in uh, the RKK stuff, and specifically um, Etsy, JD, Baidu, right? Some of these names. Nvidia as a chip stock, um, Roku. So, and then on the long side, long Moderna, Ulta, consumer stuff like Netflix, uh, Illumina, Fang, Fang is oil. So. Again, this this just verifies that uh, de-risking of the high beta stuff on that last day, typically. And I, I like that there isn't that much contradiction between the last day and the five day. You know, yeah. There's enough overlap there that you can find some some nuggets. Uh, and if you can find some ways to pair things too, you know that that always helps. Um, so, economic reports. Yeah. So. Here we go. Monday, of course, is uh, Christmas. So Tuesday, there's a little bit of housing data, the Case Shiller Home Price Index and Consumer Confidence. Wednesday, nothing going on. Thursday, initial jobless claims, um, some inventory reports, retail, wholesale inventories, and then pending home sales. So again, Tuesday and Thursday is about housing data. And then Friday, the bond market closes early, and there's not much Chicago business barometer. So the only news that noteworthy might be some housing data on Tuesday or Thursday and, and jobless claims. And in terms of earnings, there's not much going on. There's nothing noteworthy for the earnings side. Okay. 
Well, that uh, that wraps it up then. And you guys uh, have a, a safe holiday here and um, hopefully you get some rest and some good time with the family and also prepared for any trading you're going to do in the shortened week. All right. Okay. Merry Christmas. Good Thank luck. you, Dave.